us now is Chief Robert Hevia of Miami Fire Rescue Department. Well, we asked him to join us tonight to give us a clearer picture of what's going on in the streets as first responders have to deal with this crisis. Uh, welcome, Chief. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, CBS4 and I investigated the opioid crisis, the silent killer on the streets of Miami, Miami-Dade County, Broward as well. Back in November 2016, we looked extensively, and in a ride-along we went with Miami Fire Rescue, there were more than a handful of calls in just about an hour span. That was a year and a half ago. How have things changed in that time? Sadly, it hasn't changed much. We've seen a, a bit of a decrease. Our, our uh, peak of the responses was in 2016. Uh, when we look back at 2012, 2013, our department was responding on approximately 250 to 300 uh, uh, calls annually well, related to opiate overdoses. 2016, over 1,700. We're still way over the mark in 1,600 range. So, so we still have a long way to go to go back to our baseline of 2012, 2013. Chief, let me ask you about the synthetic opioids that are on the market right now, like fentanyl and carfentanil, which I'm told could knock out an elephant. Uh, what precautions do your crews have to take out there when they're responding to these cases? So you're exactly right. These concentrations are very potent. Uh, we've had to provide continuing education to our paramedics uh, so that they are able to recognize the signs of an opiate overdose uh, more quickly. What we have seen a change is in the treatment of opiate overdose, uh, particularly in the antidote naloxone, uh, much, much higher doses than we were typically using five years, a, a decade ago. So that has required additional training by our personnel, not only in the training, but we've had to increase the supply. The supply of naloxone available in the trucks, the, the, the supply available within our, our resources to, to, uh, to restock those apparatus. That's not the same as Narcan, or is it? It is the same as Narcan. Narcan is the brand name or the tra trade name, and naloxone would be the generic name. Okay. Of it. Chief, this is a national problem, and we know that the, that the federal government is actually uh, is spending some money on an opioid uh, program nationwide. But you were telling us that, that this area here in South Florida is really at the epicenter of the national problem. Why? Clearly, we're, we're very busy. Um, in the response, emergency medical services plays a, a key role in gathering that data. Uh, at the stage that we're in, uh, we're, we're ground zero. Uh, so the city of Miami has been able to collect data and share data. And this data is important because we share it with our law enforcement partners. We share it with our partners in, in public health, which are able to then create initiatives towards this, towards this epidemic. We're really tackling this as, as a task force. Years ago, it was the pill mills, and there was a lot of legislation and prosecution of those people who were operating those pill mills. But the experts who are now looking into this crisis say this is a direct result of the shuttering of those pill mills. So what can be done now? Those pill mills were shut down, but what can we do to, to change this crisis right now? Currently, it's in education, and like I said, I think it's going to take a task force. We, we're, we need to partner. Uh, our role as emergency responders is dealing with the life-threatening emergencies uh, and providing the data so that our partners in public health, uh, within the judicial system as well, create uh, initiatives that can tackle it. I don't think there's one solution. Uh, I think that it's going to have a, a need a collaborative effort by all of us to, to really tackle this problem. And, and like I told you before, I, I don't see it uh, really decreasing any time in the near future. I, th I think we're we're still at the at its peak. Suing well, the pharmaceutical companies that a good move in your opinion by the city of Miami? What in particular? Are you so, uh, they're they're targeting the the pharmaceutical companies, the people who are distributing and creating these drugs. We just mentioned that the city of Miami, the attorneys have filed suit. I imagine that your department is in support of something like that. Well, I think that's a, a question better answered by the law department. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our role in fire rescue is is providing a service to the citizens. Regardless of the uh, legal matters, um, our mission doesn't change. Whether it's the cost, uh, whether it is a, a legal action, if someone needs our care, we are going to provide the care. The best part of wearing this uniform is that we don't put a price tag on someone's life. Well, the we question, respond anyway. The question is, if it is so bad, this crisis, can you actually perform that? What kind of strain is it putting on the department? Well, we constantly have to evaluate that. We're in the midst of a strategic plan, and, and it's, it's a good point that you bring up because the fires, the heart attacks, those other calls they don't, don't stop. They don't mm -hmm. stop. And, and the population is increasing as well. So we constantly evaluate that, that uh, those responses, certainly the opioid overdose responses are part of that, to develop a strategy moving forward that we may require additional resources to be able to handle the call volume. You're exactly right. Maybe we will see a task force. That would be great, right? I hope that uh, we put an end to this problem soon. Yeah.
Chief right, Kevia, thank you so much. Thanks for thank having you so me. much. Thank you. Thanks.